with Mark Clayton, the president of Phoenix Flooring. Mark, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks, Dave. Glad to be here. Appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. Well, it's, I've been curious about the organization, and it's a great time to learn. Can you fill us in? Give us a little history of the company. Uh, sure, I'll be glad to. Uh, Phoenix is uh, actually a relatively young uh, manufacturer in this industry. Uh, for those who are not real familiar with us, the company actually has been around for about 12 or 13 years now. Uh, most of your, your viewers will know us as Phoenix, um, but we actually got our start a few years, uh, as I said, about 12 or 13 years ago, uh, actually as a company name of Loop, Looptex Mills. And Looptex was actually formed uh, uh, back when it was originally created as a company that serviced the home center uh, industry. And so uh, that's important to know because it really plays well into our tradition and, and our legacy and, and how we became as successful as we have today. Um, if you go back to those, those early days and how we got our start, we were really focused on a strong customer service model. Um, we were focused on shipping the order right the first time, every time. And uh, that, that legacy has served us well even today as we've continued to grow throughout the years. Um, fast forward a few years after, uh, after LoopTex was formed, we started the Phoenix division and that was essentially created to allow us to go out to the independent retailers, expand our reach across the nation. Um, and uh, that was very successful for us. We had some tremendous partners uh, throughout the country that worked with us and uh, helped us become what we are today. Um, and then a few years ago, we actually, uh, in order to uh, better leverage that, that Phoenix name, which was kind of what most people knew us as, we, we rebranded ourselves and rolled everything under the Phoenix moniker and became Phoenix Flooring. And then you probably know just a few months ago, uh, we were excited to announce we actually were merged with the Farr family of companies and became part of that organization, which has a tremendous legacy of 75 years of history. Mm -hmm. How has that changed, the Farr Yarn acquisition? How has that changed things? Um, well, obviously it's been a very positive thing for us. I think for the Phoenix division per se, it's not really changed the way we operate. I mean, we continue to do business as we always uh, have, although obviously it's given us a strong financial foundation. It's given us the ability to uh, be confident that we have the resources to invest for the future, uh, which gives our customers the confidence in knowing that we've got a strong financial uh, uh, footing. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, FAR has got a strong, rich 75-year uh, history. Uh, any company, especially in the textile industry, that survives 75 years as they have, they obviously are, are good at adapting and, and uh, uh, changing as, as they need to. And they've been very good at, uh, at creating a diverse platform and, and portfolio of businesses. And, and we're excited to be a part of that now. And, and I think that serves us well. And, and it's no secret, I mean, most of our competitors are vertically integrated. Uh, that was a, a slight disadvantage we had here at Phoenix. So now, obviously, we can leverage the uh, resources that we have uh, in being a vertical operation. And, I, you know, quite honestly, I think for the FAR yarn customers, it serves them well also because uh, FAR now has the ability to continue to invest and build the platform of uh, products and diversification that they're used to seeing and, and provide better products for their customers as well. And they have diversified into some unusual, you know, non-textile areas, sure. it seems. Sure, they have. I mean, uh, FAR actually has five business units, Phoenix Flooring, of course, uh, FAR Yarns, which everyone's familiar with. Uh, they have a high-performance uh, yarn division. Uh, a uh, land development division, which is Belmont Land Development, and then Strand Hotel Management Group. Very interesting, very interesting. The model that you mentioned, how this organization started and then you expanded to include the individual retailer, is that still the basic model even though the names have changed? It is. Um, obviously, both of those uh, customer platforms are very important to us, both the home center and the independent retail uh, channel. I think uh, as we continue to grow, uh, we'll look to continue to grow that independent retail network. Uh, you know, from the beginning, we were very focused on the major metropolitan markets, 
and we've built strong relationships with the large retailers in those markets um, and we're not looking to change that model. I think where our opportunity lies is in better penetration of the secondary markets which will just occur through our continuing to expand our, our reach into those I markets. See, I see. How would you describe your product philosophy? I mean and again as you mentioned you're operating in an environment with lots of major players vertically right. integrated, lots of people on the street involved in every product category. That's an interesting group of competitors. It is, it is. We have uh, tremendous competitors out there that we obviously have a, a lot of respect for. Um, and, and we're not trying to be everything to everyone right now. Um, we're obviously we're playing in the residential market, more specifically in the residential replacement categories, kind of where we focus uh, our efforts. Um, I think most people know that kind of our core competency is in the solution diet arena. Um, we we focus both on polyester and nylon. Um, in, the, in those solution diet arenas, is not the only areas we participate, but that's where the bulk of our business is. And one thing I'm really excited about is if you look at what's really hot in carpet today, uh, we're in the two hottest categories in my mind. Number one being the uh, Stain Master Pet Protect segment in the nylon category, uh, which is a big, big sector for us. And then number two being the solution diet polyester arena, which again, uh, where we got our start and, and is a big, big business for us. So uh, we're participating where we need to. I, I think our um, kind of our expertise, and, and this is why the relationship between us and FAR was such a, a natural fit, is um, their manufacturing assets as well as ours are geared to really manage a complex mix of, of solution dyed. SKUs. We're really good at managing complexity and creating a really diverse uh, product offering. And that's not easy to do in this solution diet arena that we've chosen to, to, to play in. But that, that's kind of where we, where we play today. You, you had mentioned when we first started talking about developing uh, relationships, and that's really part of the foundation of right. this company. Talk about that. I mean, a lot of people say that you know, building partnerships. That's been a buzzword for as long as I can remember in this business. Right. Um, some do and some don't, actually. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think we've been fortunate in that we have been able to build tremendous relationships with our retail partners. Um, I think certainly, um, you know, you mentioned those other uh, manufacturers out there and some of the larger ones. I think it's no secret that retailers are looking for an alternative supply source. We certainly provide that. Um, if you can provide that in a, a sector and a segment that's important to them and do it in a extremely uh, strong way, I think that creates a lot of credibility and, and viability uh, for you. Um, you know, we have a really um, really good sales network out there that has really good relationships out in the field. We have uh, the same same capabilities here at corporate. Um, I think um, if, if you look at uh, the other thing that we really bring to the table with those customers, you know, I think they view us as being extremely responsive and relational. That's, that's easy to say, but at the end of the day, we are quick to respond. Uh, we're accessible and they know at the end of the day uh, we're going to be reliable. We're going to be someone that's going to stand behind uh, them and do what, what needs to be done to take care of them and make sure that, uh, that they're serviced well and I think that's important for, for us. Is that the prime element why retailers like another supplier or a supplier that's not one of the, you know, the major multi-billion dollar companies because of the response, because they know you're important, you know, they're important to you? I, th I think it's, it all comes down to relationships. I mean, even, even the larger companies that are successful uh, in specific markets are, are that way because of the relationships they have. And so it, it all comes down to relationships, I think. But you've you, you got to be able to back that up, obviously, with yeah. a strong service model. How do, you, how do you build those? How do you build that kind of relationship? Well, that may be a silly question, but I think it, uh, it at the most basic level it starts uh, it starts at the customer contact point with a with a strong representation. But 
it's got to be, as I mentioned, it's got to be supported back at the mill level. Um, and again, I'm always, I always like to tell people about how we started, and I mentioned in the, in the first question about how we started servicing the home center business. That may be, not be that important to a lot of people, but it's foundational to how we, in this shorter period, were able to build such a strong culture. You can go and talk to anyone back there in our uh, facility, and they'll tell you their number one objective is to ship the order, ship it on time, ship it right the first time, and make it happen no matter what, what the requirement is. So uh, our customers see that, and for a, a, a manufacturer to be the size and scale we are, but to be able to service on the same um, uh, as well as some of those larger companies, I think says a lot, and they recognize that, and especially, again, I'll keep going back to this, but we're in a very difficult, complex sector that we that we manage that being solution dot um, um, products.